One of the things you have to understand about this, rewind way back to 1648, is that Europe was made up originally of lots of small independent kingdoms. All right, that is what you're seeing on this. When we when we think of like Germany, so there was a region of Europe that sometimes was loosely called Germany or people considered themselves Germanic peoples, but there was no unified Germany, like borders of a German country or empire until the late 1800s. Instead, this is what you had, small independent kingdoms that were part of this greater Holy Roman Empire. But that's going to change. Now, when, when we look at the causes of World War I, the acronym that's easy to remember is the word MAIN, M-A-I-N. And each of those letters stands for a factor that leads to the war. M being militarism, all right? A being the alliance system. I being imperialism. And N is nationalism. So as we go, we're going to talk about each of those terms, all right? But militarism was the idea that Europe had been building up arms, almost like an arms race. They had been building all of these empires, like stronger and stronger militaries. You know, the old saying, keeping up with the Joneses, keeping up with your neighbors, all right? So Germany's got this big army. So France is going to have a big army and it's going to go back and forth and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and more powerful. We know what imperialism is because we've been studying that previously with the United States. Right and how the U.S. got Hawaii and how the U.S. got Puerto Rico and Guam and the Philippines and it wasn't just the U.S. was that was doing that. All right, so even though we were empire building, imperialistic, uh, Germany was doing the same thing, Austria was doing the same thing. Right, this is going on in Europe too, and some of those smaller countries that are being taken over, in particular by Austria, push back. They want independence. They want independence from that imperialism. So I always go through this story. It's kind of funny. Um, it's if World War I was a bar fight. And it's it's a pretty good little narrative of like the things that happened just kind of transformed into it being a bar fight. So I'm going to read this because it's kind of entertaining. So Russia throws a punch at Germany, but misses and nearly falls over. Japan calls over from the other side of the room that it's on Britain's side, but just kind of stays there. Italy surprises everyone by punching Austria, their former friend. Australia punches Turkey and gets punched back. There are no hard feelings because Britain made Australia do it. France gets thrown through a plate glass window but gets back up and carries on fighting. Russia gets thrown through another one, gets knocked out, suffers brain damage, and wakes up with a complete personality change. <laughs> That's a reference to the Russian Revolution that happens during the war. Uh, Italy throws a punch at Aus Austria and misses, but Austria falls over anyways. Italy raises both fists in the air and runs around the room chanting. America waits until Germany is about to fall over from sustained punching from Britain and France, then walks over, smashes it with a bar stool, and pretends it won the fight all by itself. By now, all the chairs are broken and the big mirror over the bar is shattered. Britain, France, and America agree that Germany threw the first punch of the whole thing is Germany's fault. While Germany is still unconscious, they go through its pockets, steal its wallet, and buy drinks for all of their friends. That's a hint of what's coming, right, with World War II, because Germany is blamed for this in the end, and Germany is forced to pay a bunch of reparations. They're forced to pay money to the Allies, and they go poor, and Germany's uh, entire economy is shattered, and that's what leads to World War II. So it's not the war that ends all wars. So what is it? Well, World War I is a war that lasts four years. It unites 18 countries against four countries, causes the death of over 10 million soldiers, 7 million civilians die, and 37 million casualties. Casualties are dead and wounded, not just people that die. But think of that, that 17 million people die in this war. Ushers in a brand new level of weapons, all right? We're talking machine guns, grenades, tanks, poison gas. It's almost like World War I is kind of the first modern war, I like to say. Saw diseases like influenza, typhoid, trench foot, and trench fever take over. 
rats the sizes of full-grown house cats down in the trenches. And it produces images like this. What do we see here? It's kind of a clash of the new and the old. All right. Got more advanced weaponry as we see here. Gas masks. We've got the guns. This one, people never know what that is. Is that Are those people's heads chopped off? Actually, what they are is their masks. And each mask goes with what's below it. World War I led to a lot of disfigurement among the soldiers. Exact reproductions of the men's faces. So up here, what we see is their injuries. And then they would make a new mask straight below that's supposed to look like their old face. And so the World War I veterans would wear these masks after the war to hide their disfigured faces. That's what that is. This is this place in France that made these. You can see down here also, there's just like pieces of faces. All right, injuries like that. War is never a good thing. Destruction of the cities. Destructions of the forests. Shells everywhere. All right, so 1871 is when the German independent states form this united German empire that you see here. And Germany aligned themselves with Austria-Hungary, which was a growing empire, and Italy. And they called that the Triple Alliance. This is the genesis of what's going to be the central powers during the war, although Italy is going to switch sides later on. Um, when the war gets underway, the allies, Britain, France, Russia, they promise Italy this small section of land over in the Austrian Empire that Italy historically had uh, claimed that they believe belonged to them. So when the Allies promise Italy that if we win, you'll get this little bit of land back, they agree to switch sides. But originally, Italy was in this triple alliance with Austria, Hungary, and Germany. In response to this alliance, France and Russia formed an alliance, right? Because France wants to have a buddy to not only keep watch over these central powers, but pr protect them. They're on the borders. So that's what we call the Franco-Russian alliance. They have this common interest in opposing Germany and Austria-Hungary. All right. Later on, Britain jumps in and they call this the friendly alliance, aka the triple entente. So it's basically the Franco-Russian alliance with Britain added to the fold. And with this, they kind of encircle those central powers, right? This is what leads to World War I because one of these countries goes to war, their allies declare war, and everyone, it pulls in almost the entire continent. Now, to understand why this is happening again, and this is kind of the nationalism movement, because Austria-Hungary had been really expanding to the south and taking over these small nations. And so what you see here during World War One is that Serbia is still independent. They're actually linked to Russia. But right to the west of Serbia is this nation called Bosnia. And as you can see, Bosnia, which had kind of a cultural history with Serbia, Bosnia is part of the Austrian Empire. So like this is how the country looks today, or all these countries look today. It's several small countries, right? But back then... This here, like a lot of that, was the Austrian Empire. Those didn't exist as independent nations. Today, Austria is just a small country. It was all that back then. So Bosnia, which you see here, was part of the Austrian Empire, but Serbia was independent and linked with Russia. And the war starts with this incident in Sarajevo when the Archduke, which is like the prince of the Austrian Empire, the heir to the throne, goes to visit Sarajevo. And there was a group of men in Serbia and into Bosnia called the Black Hand. And the Black Hand was like a terrorist organization. It was like an underground secret group. They were Serbian nationals that wanted Bosnia to become independent and they wanted all these places to become independent. They were nationalists. Nationalists believe in an in independence pride. Like they believe in their own sections of the world. It's like patriotic. They're pushing back against the imperialism of Austria. 
So they had planned this assassination to go over to Sarajevo and murder the prince of Austria, believing that if they did that, Austria would declare war on Serbia because that's where they were from. And if that happened, Russia would come to their defense. And if Russia comes to their defense and declares war on Austria, well, then France is going to do that because they have that alliance. And if that happens, Germany is going to come in because they have an alliance with Austria. And that's exactly what happened. It was a domino effect. All these alliances kicked into gear after this assassination and the continents at war. And eventually, England's going to come in too when Germany crosses Belgium to go to France because England, although they were in that triple entente, they weren't pledged to go to war. They didn't have to, but they did have a treaty with Belgium, which was staying neutral, that they would protect Belgium. And when Germany crosses Belgium to invade France, England gets into the war. Okay, so... Again, nationalism, this is what brought uh, the Serbians out to murder the prince of Austria-Hungary. It's an intense pride and loyalty into your own nation. And they believed in Serbia, and they believed in Bosnia, and they wanted to have this individual national identity. They didn't want to be part of this big Austrian empire. It inspires independence movements. This was definitely an independence movement, and everything that the Black Hand wanted to happen did. So their assassination worked. All right? They wanted this big war. They wanted independence, and that happens. So here it is. Uh, this day in 1914, here you see Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Sophie, entering the car that they would be murdered in in Sarajevo in Bosnia. So it's June 1914. So they go there, and I, I want to say it was one of the first trips, maybe the first trip that Franz Ferdinand took his wife on, like the first state-sponsored trip. I believe it was that Sophie was from like a lower-class family or something, and so she wasn't allowed to go on to these state, these state trips with him normally. But here he took her. I think it was their anniversary. I think it was the first time Sophie went out with him. They're in Sarajevo and they're on this parade. Okay. And they're both assassinated that day. This is one of the last pictures taken of them. So again, this group that assassinates them is called the Black Hand. And the man in the group, there was a whole gang of them that day, but the one who fires the fatal shot is this guy named Gavrio Princip. His name will be on a future slide here, but Gavrio Princip starts World War I with this assassination. So the way this all goes down, here's a map, um, is that first in the morning, they're, they're on this parade through the streets of Sarajevo and they're headed to City Hall. I believe that picture you just saw is them walking out of City Hall to go to the next stop, which is like this lunch or something. So the parade route was public, and the Black Hand, as you can see, uh, there's like seven of them there that day. This is their positions on that original parade route. So they were all stationed along here, and they all had jobs to try to murder the Archduke. So as the route goes along this green line, it passes the first two, and they both stalled they didn't do it they lost their nerve they get to the third guy Kabriovich. Kabriovich is here he tosses this grenade at the motorcade and it seems like a success it's like a perfect shot at the car carrying the archduke but Kabriovich forgets that there's a 10 second delay from when he pulls the pin to when the uh to when it explodes the grenade so he hits the Archduke's uh, car, uh, and when this happens, the car like sees this coming, it speeds up, and then it lays on the streets as the cars behind pass, and it explodes. I want to say it's like four cars behind him. It explodes under the this other car in the parade. Shrapnel is sent into the crowd. People are injured. Kabriovich, all these people's jobs was if they killed the Archduke, they're supposed to take cyanide and kill themselves. This is going to sound kind of funny. It's not funny, obviously. But it's going to sound kind of funny. It's 
been it's been 107 years so <laughs> but i mean this guy epically failed so kabrievich not only did he mistime the grenade but he takes his cyanide afterwards and it's expired it doesn't kill him <laughs> All that happens is he begins vomiting violently, but it doesn't kill him. Then he goes behind him to jump into off uh, this bridge into this river to drown himself. Right? Well, guess what? That June uh, there was a there was a bit of a drought going on. That river was only 13 centimeters deep, <laughs> so he jumps into the river, doesn't drown him. He's pulled out of the river and arrested. As that motorcade speeds off. It passes all these other people, and it's going too fast for them to get a good eye on the target, and they are unable to assassinate uh, the Archduke. All right. When the Archduke gets to City Hall, he's furious. There's been this explosion, this grenade. They've been attacked. He's telling the local government, you haven't protected me. Uh, and they're urging him to wait for mil military escorts before he leaves. But he's very insistent that he wants to go to this hospital to visit the people that were wounded by the grenade attack. So they get into the car, which I believe is this picture, leaving City Hall. And then they are supposed to go this direction, straight back down the street to go to the, to the hospital. Instead, the driver was not informed, and he hangs a right here. When he hangs a right, immediately someone else in the car tells the driver, you're going the wrong way. Turn around and go down that street again. Apple. Okay, so when he does that, here's the problem. All right, so they stop the car in front of this deli. And who is standing outside of that deli? Probably hardly able to believe his eyes that there is the car carrying the Archduke stopped right in front of him on the streets. Gavriel Princhep. Couldn't believe it. Takes out his pistol, walks up to the car, and shoots the Archduke and his wife. Right? He's immediately tackled. He tries to take his cyanide to kill himself. Doesn't happen. He's arrested. Goes to prison. Everything Princhev wanted to happen after this does. The alliance system is triggered. Eventually, the big powers of Austria and Germany are defeated. And uh, Bosnia is no longer part of the Austrian Empire. Princhev didn't live to see that, however. He had tuberculosis and he died in jail. But what he wanted to have happen is exactly what happened. This is a picture of the arrest of Kabrinovich after they dragged him out of the water when he failed to kill himself earlier in the day. Sandwich shop again. This is where Princhep was. That map, he stand earlier, uh, Princhep, as you can see, was like here in the interim after the parade. He had walked over here and he could probably hardly believe it when that car came and turned right in front of him, stopped to turn around and he came out and shot him. That's the Archduke's outfit that he was wearing after the fact. You can see the damage as you'll notice in that picture again. That's the coat he was wearing. And so World War I is on. Right afterwards, just as according to plan, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, which is where the group, the Black Hand and Princip, where they were based. When that happens, Russia mobilizes for war to protect Serbia, their ally, which is then going to convince France to do the same because Russia and France had a military alliance, the Franco-Russian alliance. Similarly, Germany has the alliance with Austria, so Germany declares war on Russia and France, and they are, they're all at war now. The alliance system has been triggered. And World War I is on. You can see the headlines here. Germany declares war. All Europe is in arms. World War I has begun. What brings England into the war or Britain... 
is when Germany crosses Belgium. I said this a few minutes ago to get to France and invade France in the early days of the war. So the allies during the war will be the Triple Entente plus Italy, because Italy changes sides as we talked about. This this is the land that Italy was promised um, in April of, of 1915, early in the war. This This light green here and this light green here, that little bit of the Austrian Empire, which they believe was their heritage, was rightfully theirs, that gets Italy to abandon Austria and fight alongside the Triple Entente, the Allies. And then eventually, 1917, the U.S. will join the war as well. But one more time, there it is, the causes of the war. It's very simple if you just remember the acronym MAIN, M-A-I-N, Militarism, Alliances, Imperialism, and Nationalism.